Hi guys. These videos are made for following along with the book How to Make Great Music Mashups, the start to finish guide to making mashups with Ableton Live. If you don't have the book, that's no problem. You can still follow along and learn the techniques that will take your mashups to the next level. You'll just need a copy of Live to try the methods yourself. So let's get up to speed with Ableton Live. The best way to learn from these tutorials is to simply open up the application and follow along with the steps using your own tracks and vocals. In this video we'll be taking a quick look at live and figuring out how to get around it and identifying the sections that you need to use the most when making mashups. Let's take a look at the main views in Ableton Live, Session and Arrangement. If you're using Ableton Live for the first time, you'll usually be shown the Session view first. The Session view is a summary of everything you have imported into your session. If you've just started a new session, there's unlikely to be anything in there yet. The session screen is a summary of everything you've imported into your session, and is great fun if you want to make up a DJ set on the spot, which is basically what the software was originally intended for. For making mashups, however, we want to be in the arrangement view, so that we can plan out the arrangement of our mashups. You can switch between views by pressing the tab key. If you're familiar with other digital audio workstations, this will seem very familiar to you. The arrangement view looks very much like the session view displayed in most DAWs, with each track displayed as a row, and the timeline moving left to right. This main area, which takes up most of the space on the screen, is where you'll be doing most of your work. It's where you'll be dropping in tracks, samples, vocals and effect sounds that make up your mashups. There are different kinds of tracks that we can use, which we'll get into a little bit later. If you look up the top of the screen, you'll see the transport bar, which has controls for playing and stopping playback, as well as setting the song tempo, which is displayed as a number in beats per minute. Rather than actually using the mouse to click these buttons, I suggest you try and get used to using the space bar as a play and stop button, as you'll be using it quite a lot. Up the top of the main arrangement window, you'll see the session ruler, where the bars of the sequence are numbered, starting at bar one. Because Ableton are aware of the way that dance music works and how it likes to be grouped into eight bar sections, they've helped us out here by automatically shading the background of the arrangement window so that it's easy to visually group together the bars of the music we're dealing with. How closely you're zoomed in or out will change how these groupings visually appear on the screen, whether each shaded group represents eight bars, four bars, a beat or a half beat. To experiment with this, you can zoom in and out by getting your mouse and clicking on the ruler and dragging it up and down. This will zoom in and out around the point you've actually clicked on the ruler, making sure it is always visible on the screen. To place the playback cursor, simply left click anywhere in the arrangement window while playback is stopped, then press the space bar to start playing again from that point. You can also left click the area just below the ruler to start playback without changing your track selection. Over to the left side, we have the browser window, which is where you can access all of Live's instruments, samples, loops, and effects processes, as well as your own sample libraries. Using the browser, you'll be dragging in ready-to-use audio such as builds, sweeps, and booms to assist in making our own mashups. Live already has some samples included in the software, so you can try this out now by going to the Categories section, clicking on Samples, and dragging an audio file from the browser onto an audio track in the timeline. There are a few different types of tracks in Live. The main one we'll be using is an audio track. Other track types that you might find yourself using are MIDI tracks, return tracks, and the master track. To create a new audio track, you can go up to the menu and click Create, and then Insert Audio Track. Otherwise, you can just use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control T for Windows and Command T for Mac. Given that we'll be mostly working with audio that has already been created, such as pre-existing dance tracks, radio tracks, vocals, and effect sounds, we'll pretty much be sticking to audio tracks while making mashups. But if you're familiar with music production, you may actually want to use a MIDI track occasionally. Once we have an audio track and an audio clip placed on it, we can take a closer look at that track or that clip using the area down the bottom of the arrangement screen. The long window that goes along the bottom contains controls for clip view and device view. These can be a little bit tricky, so you have to be careful. If you click on a clip within the session, it will take the focus of the clip view to that piece of audio. 
This is where you can manipulate how the audio is treated by Live within the instance of that clip. It includes settings for whether the clip is muted or active, volume controls, as well as the speed or pitch of the audio within the clip. We'll look into this in more detail in the next video. It also contains a section that shows you how much of the audio is actually being used by the clip. It's important to remember that one clip might not be playing an entire file. It may just be a short section. This is particularly important for mashups because most of the time we aren't playing an entire song, we're playing a short section of it. And it's important to make sure that our clip contains the section of audio that we actually want to use. Lastly, we can click the button that changes between clip view and device view, or use the keyboard shortcut Shift T. This will switch the view over to device view. The important difference between these two views is that clip view represents one or more specifically selected clips on the timeline, whereas device view deals with properties that apply to the entire track, that is, everything on that row in the timeline. The device view is where we manipulate the audio that's coming off the timeline. This is where we send it through effects processes like equalization, filters, compression, limiters, delays, or reverbs. In the next video, we'll get into importing tracks and finding out how Ableton deals with them and tries to get everything working together in rhythm. Thanks for watching.